As you write, you may want to annotate your project with comments and footnotes. Scrivener has a full comment system which allows you to add comments to your text by making a selection and going to insert comment or using the keyboard shortcut command shift asterisk. You'll notice that this opens the inspector with a comment that automatically contains your name, the date and the time of your comment, which you can either keep for reference or replace with whatever you want to write. You can also control click on the comment in the inspector to assign it a different colour, either from the palette provided or using a colour wheel. This is especially useful for organisation if multiple editors have commented a document or if the comments follow specific themes. You can also make the comments in line with the text using insert inline annotation or command shift A, which will either convert the selected text to an annotation or if no text is selected, an annotation will begin at the text insertion point. Note that this will not create a comment in the inspector because the comment appears in the text itself. You can compile a document with comments and annotations to a format which supports them like a Word docx file. Just make sure the right documents are included in the compile group, click the options cog here and toggle the appropriate options to include or remove comments and annotations. I'll launch the exported docx file in Apple Pages and you can see that the comments now appear the way Pages formats them. The same would be true of Microsoft Word. In a larger document, you can even use comments like bookmarks. Clicking on them in the inspector will jump to that position in the text. The reverse is also true. Clicking on an existing comment without the inspector open will open it to the entry for that comment. If you open Preferences and go to Editing, you'll find a Footnotes and Comments section with the option to toggle whether comments open the inspector. With that option unchecked, if the inspector is closed, the comment will appear in a pop-over window where you can edit or delete the comment without having to refer to the inspector, although your comments will still use the inspector if you open it manually. Footnotes work in a similar way. Both inline and inspector footnotes are available from the insert menu and have their associated keyboard shortcuts. Control command 8 for inspector footnotes and control option F for inline footnotes. The main difference with footnotes is how they appear in a compiled document. If we open the compiler, you'll see that the option to remove footnotes is here, but it defaults to leaving footnotes in the text. There are options to export inspector footnotes and or inline footnotes as endnotes. If these are left unchecked and we compile to a PDF, you'll see that footnotes are automatically placed here at the end of the page. Exporting them as endnotes would move them to the very end of the manuscript or, alternatively, the position of the endnote marker, which you can add to the document using insert endnote marker. If you use comments or footnotes regularly, you might want to add appropriate buttons for them to your toolbar by going to View, Customize Toolbar. Here you'll find buttons that you can add for inline annotations, inline footnotes, inspector comments, and inspector footnotes. That's all we're going to cover in this video. If you're interested in learning more about the other features of Scrivener, our other videos should be linked nearby. Thanks for watching and happy writing.